Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me again. This week we're going to look at how to develop lead lines from song melodies and we'll be using Dolly Parton's Jolene as our template. This is a melody that I'm sure most of you are well aware of and it's gained some extra popularity lately partly due to Beyonce's awful version of it. So if you're coming here from hearing that version I do recommend checking out the original Dolly Parton version. So I've made a backing track for this one, which will be provided in the lesson materials of course, and we'll be sticking with the original key of C-sharp minor. Now in terms of our approach, we're going to use a mixture of elements. The chord progression contains three chords, C-sharp minor, E, and B. So we'll be using a mixture of the C-sharp minor pentatonic and blues scales, as well as the triads and arpeggios for the chords themselves. So the C-sharp minor, the E, and the B. So unusually, let's start with a little bit of tone talk. I'm using my Nacho Caster, of course. This is a very traditional telly build with nice low output pickups. I'm on the middle position to start with for that really glassy, high clarity kind of tone. And I'm running into the Cornerstone Gladio overdrive pedal with the gain set pretty low and the dry signal blended in a little. That's then going into the Strymon Deco for a very small amount of slapback delay. That then goes into the Strymon Flint for a bit of reverb and trem. The amplifier is my Lazy J20, it's a tweed style amp, really good bass tone for adding pedals to. And this is all being recorded into Logic Pro via the Universal Audio Oxbox. So for the most part we're letting the intro speak for itself, but we are going to announce ourselves with a couple of tasty little phrases. The first one is this. If you've seen my other videos you'll recognize that phrase I'm sure. We're thinking C sharp minor blues scale taking the top three strings and barring the minor triad there at the ninth fret. Now a little bit of a stretch, we're going to take the 12th fret of the G string and slide from 12 to 13, hitting all three of those strings at the same time. And I'm hybrid picking that. Plectrum on the G, second finger on the B, third finger on the E. And then down the scale. And then a double stop at the ninth fret on the D and G strings one of those typical bluesy trills from 9 to 11 and back on the D. Then another phrase that I'm sure you'll recognize if you've seen some of my other videos, namely the Rebo studies. This is the C-sharp minor chord again, we've got the minor third, and we're adding the second or the ninth degree of the scale with that to create that clashing effect. Then we come down to the root there, and then we're staying within this C-sharp minor chord shape hammering on from the flat 7 to the root on the G string while remaining on the 5th fret of the B. Again, I'm hybrid picking all of these double stops, plectrum and 2nd finger. And then down the minor pentatonic scale. And the melody officially kicks off there on beat 1. Now remember that the whole idea here is to use the melody of the tune as a building block for our lead lines and improvisation ideas. Of course, to be able to do that, in the first place, you've got to know the melody itself. So we start by just quoting the opening line of the song. And when it comes to using melodies as a building block for soloing, you've got a couple of options. You can either vary the melody and change it around a little bit, or you can keep the melody fairly straight and then respond to it. We're going for the latter to begin with. This little response here over a B major chord. I'm visualizing this B major triad. String set 2, second inversion. Now I'm moving that same triad to the next string set. Strings A, D, and G. And we're going to do one of these nice country bends where we bend the G string, a semitone, by pulling it down and then releasing it. And a couple of notes for the melody before going to a C-sharp minor with another country kind of double stop sound. Taking the 9th fret of the B string, adding the 8th fret of the G string, and bending a semitone so we end up with a C-sharp minor triad. And then play the C-sharp root note at the 6th fret of the G string. Now we have a space before the melody comes back in, we're going to fill it with a nice little country lick. So again I'm using triads as my navigational tool with that, I'm thinking of this C sharp minor triad here, and then this one here, before finishing up here. Elements 
bits of the blues scale in there as well using the flatted fifth. Using double stops, hybrid picking again. And then we slide along the D string, 9 to 11, grab a double stop at 11 on the G and B strings, bounce back to the root, double stop at double 9, and then down the minor pentatonic. Now we're back on beat 1 of the melody again. We're an octave above where we began. We're going to use some bends to access the melody this time. Makes it sound a little more vocal. And then we play the 12th fret of the B string before releasing that bend. And let the two notes collide. Double bend, root, major 7th. Back to two notes from your C sharp minor triad. Now this major 7th takes a little bit of explaining. I'm thinking of sort of gypsy jazz vocabulary at that point. I'm thinking of implying the 5. The A flat 7 bringing in the uh, major third of that chord in order to do so. You could also see it as part of a melodic minor. Which always adds a really nice bit of flavour. Very subtle, but really adds a bit of class to it. Now in response to that, we're just going to play a very simple blues phrase. So as always, you can get hold of the lesson materials for this by going to the links in the description. I have a Patreon where for a small monthly cost you get access to all of my lesson materials, past, present and future, or you can simply make a one-off purchase for this lesson in particular at the Gumroad link. The lesson materials, as always, will include tab and notation in Guitar Pro and PDF formats, as well as my backing tracks. Your support is massively appreciated and it's what allows me to keep making these videos, so thank you so much. Okay, so now we're into the first verse and we're going to start to take more liberties with the melody and pretty much leave it alone and do our own thing. So the first chord change, C sharp minor to the E major. We're starting with this C sharp minor phrase, the fifth, the root, the two, and the flat three. Again, you'll see that in a few of my videos. I think it's a really important little bit of melodic vocabulary to have under your fingers. It's very simple, isn't it? You can just take a C-sharp minor triad or arpeggio and simply add the two in before the flat three each time. Very pretty. So we're using that. Now we're thinking E major has arrived, so we grab the major third, so you can be visualizing this triad here. Now we're thinking of moving to B, and you can see very clearly there, part of a B major triad. So already C sharp minor to E to B, a bit of that country stuff again, C sharp minor, back to B, this triad this time. Now we're staying on B for a moment, so we move up to this triad. First inversion, string set one. Slide to the major third. And now we're heading back to the C sharp minor. I do one of these little peels that I like to do. It just sounds very elegant, I find. Pull off, pull off again. Then 12 on the, G, on the B string. And now C sharp minor. Simply pentatonic. Then a blues phrase in response to that. Again with some trilly stuff. Starting in the pentatonic shape one, sliding up to shape two, bringing in the flattened fifth with the pinky finger. And then again outlining notes from a C sharp minor triad. Now we take two more notes from your C sharp minor triad. I'm seeing this shape here, and I'm simply removing the middle note to create a, this sixth interval. Move on to the next string set, 11 on the G, 11 on the top E. These are all parts of a C sharp natural minor scale. 
same thing as the E major scale of course, natural minor and all that. So that's over the C sharp minor. Now the E chord comes back. We're just going to grab these two notes from an E major triad again. Just visualize this first inversion shape. Remove the middle note and you've got this beautiful sixth, the third and the root. Sliding into two notes from the next E major triad, the one that looks like a D chord shape. And then the B chord comes along and we're just going to arpeggiate the chord with the addition of a sus4 along the way. So triads, B major, next string set, sus4, sliding to the third, and then we're back to C sharp minor. So we're going to grab the root note of that B chord and give it a full step bend so it reaches the root, the C sharp note. And then we're going to go for one of those big Gilmore bends, but without re-picking. Then that again is more like just C-sharp minor pentatonic on the end of that. And I'm moving to the bridge pickup to get some extra bite, and we're going to play this. Which is a C-sharp minor arpeggio. But again with the addition of that note we spoke about earlier, adding the 2 in. Just there, pulling off from the flat three to the two. And then a little run up back to the melody. Because we're on top of the chorus again. So just like the previous chorus, here we're going to be a bit more direct with our quoting of the original melody. And again we'll be utilizing some bends, some slides, some hammer-ons and pull-offs, you know, just to spice things up a little bit. I feel like there's always so much freedom of expression when it comes to the bridge pickup of a Telecaster. I'd really recommend digging in quite hard to some of those notes, really make them sing. So now again we have some space between the melody lines, so we're going to interject with a little flourish of spaghetti western spikiness. first thing there is something that you'll have seen me use many times, especially in those Mark Rebo studies we've been through, where we take the minor chord, the C-sharp minor, and we imply the sound of a minor ninth by grabbing the minor third and the ninth. The fact that these are not quite a perfect octave makes them clash in a very musical way, in my opinion. I love that kind of dissonance. And then we're up to the C-sharp minor triad here root position string set one and we're going to go for a bit of a chicken picking sound by striking the top two strings muted so we're letting the left hand dampen them hit them hard with a downstroke and then bring those fingers into play and do an upstroke to follow through and do a little subtle bend on the B string and then we come down really what is like a minor pentatonic scale to land back on the melody note to start the next phrase Now if you think about this final part of the melody, we're all the way up in this upper octave of the guitar here, which is really going to test our accuracy and our bending ability. Uh, and we've travelled all the way from down here where we started the melody originally. We've traversed the octaves essentially to make it feel like it builds. It's a very simple trick to employ in your solos, to give them a little bit of shape and some storytelling value. You know, start at the lower ranges and work your way up the fingerboard. It feels like a very natural way to build. So our final piece of melody begins. It's very important that you're accurate with those bends, and also be neat when you're transitioning from one string to another. You don't want to hear any accidental pull-offs. Then the final phrase, we let things slow a little bit. And then we do one of my favourite tricks, that volume swell. We're playing the 12th fret of the top E and the 12th fret of the B string fingers 4 and 3, respectively, and you're going to hit the two strings together and bend a whole tone on the B string. So you're ending up on the top two notes of this C-sharp minor triad. 
and we swell the volume in to match the curve of, of the bend. And we also want to be adding a lot of expressiveness on the way down to that final note. Some nice bends and some pull-offs and some vibrato. And that closes out our lead study. Now I want to turn your attention to a couple of other little things. One of those parts being in my backing track where we're finding another way to apply triads to create a bit of a texture underneath. So for that part I'm going to switch to my Strat because it's nice to have some tonal variance when you're adding layers of guitar. So the basic idea with this final little bit of texture that we're throwing into the verses of our backing track is that we want to outline the basic chord progression in triad form. It's a really easy way to create these beautiful little layers of jangly guitar parts that just sit on top of things nicely and create a sense of depth in the mix. So of course it's important to have a contrasting tone, hence why, again, I'm using my Strat here for this. I'm on the neck pickup and I'm using a very clean sound. Just a bit of reverb, nothing more. So our chord progression in the verses essentially goes from C sharp minor to E to B to C sharp minor, then back to B and then back to C sharp minor. So you want to play around with plotting those things out with your triads. And to start with, I'd recommend just playing around on one particular string set each time. So for example, if I start with the first string set, C sharp minor root position triad, I'm going to follow those changes through. I'll try and add some commentary as I'm doing this. C sharp minor, E, B, C sharp minor, B, back to the C sharp minor. That's our outline. Let's explore that string set a little further. C sharp minor, E, B, C sharp minor, B, B, C sharp minor, C sharp minor, E, B, C sharp minor, B, C sharp minor. So of course now you want to do that on the rest of your string sets and then eventually you start to mix and match these string sets a little bit to create a little bit more verticality in the movement. Um, let me just sort of mess around with that for a minute. Nothing pre-planned here, just going to follow those changes. sure you can hear the potential within that stuff to create some really interesting layers. So if I walk you through exactly what I play on the backing track in the verses, I'm starting on the second string set, moving up to the top, coming back down, moving down another string set. And then for the next part we're mostly staying to the top string set. Second string set. Back to the top. And again, going back to that general theme of starting low and progressing up the fingerboard. Now, if you've got a Strat or any other guitar with a tremolo arm, that's going to sound extra cool, right? You can go all Chris Isaac on it. So I guess to summarize everything we've just worked on, as always it boils down to your fretboard knowledge. Uh, and the easiest way to gain a bit of that is to map out your triads, majors and minors especially. Also of course it really helps to know all of your pentatonic shapes and be able to move freely between them. So I guess I should tell you a little bit about this guitar. This is a Custom Shop 56 reissue Strat in the NOS format, so no relicking on it at all. 
It's nice and light, it's about seven and a half pounds, and it has my favorite type of pickups on there. Very low wound 50s style pickups. These are not the ones they call the fat 50s ones, these are the, the next lower wind down from there, simply called custom shop 50s. And this guitar is very vintage accurate, you know, it's a vintage radius, 7.25 inches, uh, and it's got very narrow and low frets. And a chunky neck that's very similar to the Nacho, in fact, it's a 1056 Fender call it. It's a soft V, progressing out to a sort of a more of a C shape. Very chunky, but feels very good in the hand. So as always, it's been a real pleasure. I really appreciate you guys spending the time with me. If you could make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel, that makes all the difference. And do check out those links in the description. My Patreon really is some serious bang for your buck. Alright guys, so I'll see you at the same time next week for something completely different. Alright, take care. <laughs>